the Native contemporary art community is pretty small so that when you hear of a large commission, especially from a prestigious place like NMAI, news travels very fast. So I was given information, somebody called me saying that there was this call for entry for the NMAI Smithsonian Outdoor Sculpture Competition. I took a look at it and I thought that was pretty interesting in that um, they were looking for an outdoor sculpture, which is something that I'm getting better at doing and of course have great interest in. I questioned whether or not the idea that was starting to um, percolate inside of me would really be doable um, because it was actually so conceptual. I didn't know if I would be able to um, put this idea forth and have it be accepted. For a long time, I had been thinking about the idea of having uh, an ephemeral piece because usually, especially in this town uh, of Washington, D.C., most, if not all, the monuments and sculptures are made out of durable, really durable material, metal, concrete, stone, so that wouldn't it be interesting, I thought, if there was a contrast in that. And not only that, um, having something ephemeral would really speak to a lot of issues about contemporary Native life and our adaptability to change in a political, social, and um, environmental landscape that um, Native people have always had to um, readjust and rethink um, on, all throughout history in our contact with the Europeans. And so the idea of creating uh, an ephemeral piece made out of organic materials from this area seemed to really start becoming a strong sensation somewhere in this process. One of the judges in the during process asked me how this would fare among the other uh, monumental sculptures. And I, I think the fact that a Native person is taking a look at the environment and working with the environment, having the environment in some ways dictate the kind of material, um, the kind of design, is really quite different than um, having a, a more stagnant art piece uh, erected. And so the materials play a major role in always becoming. Earth, straw, sand, rocks, and wood. And these resources figure prominently and are literally the foundation of the art project. And basically what I've done in designing Always Becoming is draw inspiration from tribal people who have resourced natural materials from their environment to build their homes. This is the first film in a series of podcasts that'll follow the creation of Always Becoming.